What's up guys, Sleepy Moddy here back with another video and we've all seen at this point those super expensive RAM kits and I'm sure there's quite a few out there who've thought, does it actually make any difference in terms of my gaming performance? Well today we'll find out exactly that. So for a long time, basically since my DDR2 days, I've always said that well, unless you're doing something that's super RAM intensive as well, DDR3 and onwards was basically fine at that point, there wasn't really that much use for faster RAM kits and now that we're in the DDR4 stage with like 4000 megahertz RAM, does it really make a difference between your entry level RAM and your super top tier stuff? Now sure, there are certain scenarios like onboard graphics that will actually benefit from having faster speed RAM, which is definitely well documented at this point, but if you're running a standard setup with CPU and GPU, will there be a noticeable difference? Now yes, again, I did just mention that in some situations there's a benefit in some games and some applications, especially on the Pro side will benefit from faster RAM. However, today we're taking a look at actual gaming in the real world to see do we even get a benefit from using faster speed RAM. But rather than just testing the lowest spec RAM and then the faster spec RAM, I thought why not grab a range RAM seeing I'm running all these tests and actually give you sort of a range to see where we do get our benefits and also to our drawbacks. So let's take a look at some of our RAM kits. So for the entry level low range kit, we grabbed my a crucial DDR4 2133 RAM kit. I grabbed this back when DDR4 was brand new and this guy comes in at a 32 gig capacity. This is the OG kind of kit, again back from when DDR4 was brand new. Honestly, you can still grab this kit for not too much, although DRAM prices have gone up, but overall in sort of the grand scheme of RAM, it isn't too bad on the price point. I also too then went a step up for 2400 megahertz kit, as I've definitely seen this to be a fairly popular speed that a lot of people are buying, especially with the new Ryzen setups and also to new Intel chips. 2400 seems to be that new sweet spot that a lot of companies and also to a lot of buyers are also to, well, going ahead and buying. For this, I grabbed the Vengeance LPX RAM kit for the uh, 32 gigabyte kit. Then jumping up the next stage, we grabbed ourselves a 3200 megahertz RAM kit. This is the G Skills Trident Z kit and it is a very nice kit at that. Unfortunately, it's not the RGB model, we just went with the standard one, but on Honestly, we're just borrowing them, so frankly, it doesn't really matter too much. And then we went all the way to the highest that I could actually borrow, which was a 3600 megahertz kit from Corsair. Well, I guess Corsair didn't actually send it over, but it was a Corsair kit nevertheless. So let's whack it in our system and do some benchmarking, right? Well, not exactly. Unfortunately, with this large range of different RAM speeds, it's actually a lot more difficult than just whacking those sticks in and then running at the speeds that they do. Anything over 2133 in the DDR4 range is technically classified as an overclocked speed, so it's not technically the proper speed that it is running at. Don't get me wrong, if you buy a 3000 megahertz RAM kit, it is rated for 3000 megahertz, but taking a look at the DDR4 standard, Technically speaking, it is overclocked, so I do have to do some tweaking around with the XMP settings and a few other BIOS tweaks here and there to actually get them running stable. Now, do keep in mind, today's tests are all stock speeds, mainly because I wanted to have the same reliability across the board, as we'll touch on this in just a moment, but the faster your RAM speed, usually the lower the clock speed of your CPU in terms of your overclock. So if you're running at 4 gigahertz on the CPU, you can't just whack a 4 gigahertz RAM kit there because it just won't work properly. Sure, newer technologies are coming out and newer motherboards and newer CPUs are sort of working better hand in hand, but at the end of the day, the general rule of thumb is the faster your RAM, the less of an overclock you can actually have. So for today's testing, we just kept everything at stock speeds. But with that being said, let's jump into our benchmarks and see what is going on. And taking a look at our numbers, well, yeah, I'm not really exactly surprised. Don't get me wrong, there were a few differences here and there, but they're more down to run variations than actually affecting games. If we take a look at this game for example, and if I run the exact same test on the exact same kit of RAM five times over, we see that, well, there is a variation which is similar to what we saw in many of our games and tests here. However, with that being said, if we look more closely at a couple games like this guy right here, the Rise of the Tomb Raider, we see that, well, actually it's being affected by the RAM speed. I ran these tests multiple times on multiple different RAM kits, and I found time and time again that actually this game is somewhat sensitive to RAM. Now, yes, when we're up in the high 90s and that kind of FPS range like what most of our benchmarks are here today, we're not going to be noticing it too much, but 
If you're more on the budget side with say 30 FPS, jumping up an extra 10 FPS can actually give you noticeable better performance. So it is something to keep in mind that well in some games, in some cases with some settings, this may be the case that we will be getting better FPS. So rightio then, seeing that we get better FPS possibly in some games with higher RAM speeds, we should all just go out and buy the highest performing, highest end RAM, right? Well, not fully exactly. RAM pricing is also too another thing that you do need to consider, and picking the right RAM for your build and your budget is also too the most important thing. The last thing you want to be doing is building a $1,000 gaming machine and dropping 700 of those dollars on RAM, because frankly it just doesn't make sense. Whereas on the flip side, if you're building a $10,000 system, you probably want to be spending that $700 on RAM, because you're getting the best of the best everywhere else, why not spend that on RAM? So sure, it might be good to get fast speed RAM, but at the same time, do keep in mind that you need to pick a kit of RAM that will go with your build. Not to mention that high speeds come in with lower CPU overclocks that you can get. So do keep that in mind. So rightio then, if I can't buy the fastest speed and have to look for my budget, what on earth should I do when picking RAM for my video game setup? Well, good thing that you totally didn't ask that, but I did ask that for you. Well, personally, what I would do was go ahead and look at the best value for money. If we take a look at our FPS charts and then flip them like so into value charts, we can see that around that 2066 to 2400 sort of area is where we're getting our best bang for the buck in terms of our RAM setup. For a lot of people, 2066 or 2400 or around that 2000 megahertz range is going to be delivering us again the better speeds, but also too, a lot more retailers actually carry this RAM and also too, they're offered at a lot more different capacities, ranges and specs and there's just more of these types of RAM kits. When you get down to 2133, we're kind of at that point where, well, that sort of RAM speed is kind of going away a little bit, and then up in the high end in your three and 4,000 megahertz RAM kits, there's not exactly a lot of options. So that 2,000 to 2066 uh, kind of speed is where you're going to be seeing the best performance, the most amount of options, and generally a lot more carriers will carry it. Not to mention, if you are a CPU overclocker, you can also too still get some decent overclocks out of your CPU without running into too many RAM related issues. And unless you know that your game that you want to play is going to be affected by RAM and you're only going to be playing that RAM, there's really not too much of a benefit for gaming to actually upgrade your RAM to a faster speed. Personally, what I would do was save that hundred or so extra dollars from going for your top speed RAM and actually put that into something like a video card where you're guaranteed to get better gaming FPS or even heck, a better CPU for better multitasking and other things like that. So whether you're looking at 2133 or 4000MHz, there is a slight difference in some game setups. However, not all games are affected by RAM, and most of the time you're better off spending that hundred plus dollars on a better GPU or CPU for better gaming related performance. Fast RAM may be nice to have and might come with some really cool options here and there, but do keep in mind other limitations such as motherboards and also to CPU overclocks when it comes to RAM setups. All in all though, do we get better performance in games? Yes, in some gaming scenarios. However, not all games will be affected, but there's also two other sides to the story like onboard video cards and also two pro applications which some are definitely well known from benefiting from faster speed. But today we were focusing on games and do we get better performance there and the answer is in some scenarios, yes. But let me know down in that comment section what speed RAM you run on your desktop setup. Personally, I'm running 2133, but let me know what you run down in that comment section. If you want to find some of the RAM kits that I did talk about today, again, they're all down in that description box. Thanks all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one.